for our next talk, we have Lian Min Zhang joining. Uh, Lian Min is a PhD student at UC Berkeley, uh, and he previously was an intern at OctoML. Uh, so we work closely, love Lian Min. Um, Lian Min's gonna be talking today about ALPA, which is a compiler that automates parallel training of deep learning. Uh, and I think one of the really interesting pieces is how it can distribute uh, over multiple devices and do model parallel training. Uh, that's something that, that you know, TVM in today really struggles with. So that'll be a really interesting thing for us to learn about. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning more. So I'll, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Lian Min. Hi, everyone. I'm Lian Min, a fourth year PhD student at UC Berkeley. In this talk, I'm going to tell you about ELPA, an auto parallelization compiler for distributed deep learning. This project is a collaboration between UC Berkeley, AWS, Google, and all other institutions listed here. This is TVM conference, so you know TVM is awesome for deep learning compilation. However, TVM is mainly designed for single device compilation, so it does not handle distributed execution very well when we want to target multiple devices. In this talk, I will show you how LPA brings compilation techniques to solve some core challenges of distributed deep learning, which are essential for large models like GPT-3. Let's begin with some background on large models. A lot of recent advances in deep learning are enabled by large models. For example, three years ago, OpenAI released the famous gigantic GPT-3 model with 175 billion parameters. This model is recognized as one of the most important breakthroughs in machine learning. Today, the benefit of scaling models starts to diminish. We see follow-ups like Palm and ChatGPT. People are still trying to train larger and larger models. Along with the superior capabilities of these large models come their unique challenges. In this talk, we will emphasize on the system side. We argue that training large models is not only a machine learning challenge, but also a distributed systems challenge. If we take a closer look at these groundbreaking large models, the designs of these models are almost the same as five years ago. People just use more machines to train larger models on larger data sets. These breakthroughs are enabled by simply scaling existing model designs. In other words, the large model breakthrough requires not only machine learning innovations, but also a lot of system innovations. Then what are the system challenges? Let's start from the computation pattern of deep learning. So first we have a batch of input images. We feed the input into the deep learning model. The computation involves a forward propagation to compute the prediction and a backward propagation to compute the gradients and update the model. Now, if we want to scale this training pattern, we face two problems. First, what if the input data is very large? For example, we want to train all millions of images. Second, what if the model or the layers are very large? For example, we want to train a model with billions of parameters. The difficulty of these two problems are different. The first problem is easy and has been well studied. It's called data parallelism. We can partition the input data and replicate the model. So here are two GPUs. We can replicate the model on all GPUs and then feed different input batches to different GPUs to parallelize the computation. The second problem is much harder. If the model is very large, the size of the model can be much larger than the device memory capacity, as shown in this figure. We need at least dozens of GPUs to hold the model, so we cannot afford to replicate the model. Needless to say, we also have to store a lot of intermediate results. So we also have to partition the model. However, unlike the data set, which is just a sequence of files, the model is a com complicated computational graph. How to partition it is non-trivial. Now let's take a closer look at the computational graphs and explain why it's hard. The graph begins with an input X. We then have a lot of matrix modifications, convolutions, element-wise activations or reductions. The figure, uh, this figure only shows the forward propagation of the graph. The real graph will be more complicated with backward propagation and gradient update. So how can we partition this graph on two devices? The most straightforward way is to cut the graph in the middle and put them on two devices. 
This is called interoperator parallelism. This card is actually not too bad because the communication across the card is small. However, due to data dependency, the second device cannot always be busy, so it has to wait for the first device to generate its input. So the second device will be idle at some time. Although this can be alleviated by using pipe planning, it is still results in device idle time due to the dependency between forward propagation and backward propagation. Now, if we want all devices to always be busy, what should we do? Instead of partitioning at graph level, we can partition each operator. We can partition each operator and let different devices work on uh, different regions of the same operator. This makes all devices busy, but it leads to more frequent communication because the device have to sync after one operator if the next operator cannot preserve the previous partition. In summary, this page shows two basic patterns of partitioning a graph. As I just mentioned, there are trade-offs between these two methods. Interoperator parallelism requires less communication but has more device idle time, while intraoperator parallelism requires more communication but less device idle time. Under this classification, there are more variants, which makes the problem more complicated. So first, for the intraoperator parallelism, there are multiple possible strategies to parallelize a single operator. So for example, for a matrix, we can partition it along rows, or we can also partition it along columns, or we can replicate it. When com connecting these nodes in a graph, different partition strategies can lead to totally different communication and computation costs. So this is a very difficult combinatorial optimization problem. And for the interoperator parallelism, we can increase device utilization by pipelining the execution uh, with multiple input batches as shown in this figure. We can put three layers on three devices. Then we can keep all devices busy by letting them work on different input batches. The intra-OP parallelism and inter-OP parallelism can also be combined as shown in the figure below. We can first cut the graph in two parts for inter-operator parallelism. Then for each subgraph, they can do intra-OP parallelism inside it. For an MOE mixture of expert model, we can get the best performance only when we combine these two parallelism methods as shown in this figure. But in summary, all these choices form a sophisticated search space with many trade-offs. It's very hard to efficiently search for a good strategy in this space. However, this is still not the only tricky part. The next tricky part is how to map the partition to actual devices. After partitioning the graph, we have to map the partitions to devices. So here is one GPU. It's definitely not enough for training large models. So I get a machine with four GPUs and more machines with more GPUs. So here comes the tricky part. The network used to connect these machines shows a two-level hierarchy where we have fast connections for GPUs inside the node and slower connections for uh, and slower connections across different nodes. So, so the challenge here is how to map the graph partitions to this two-level hierarchy. As you can see, this problem is challenging and very uh, important. In the past few years, people have developed a various system to solve this problem. I will list a few here. Each of the projects below is developed by a good team of researchers and engineers. Each technique also typically enables a breakthrough on the machine learning side. To classify them, I draw three circles, a red circle for intra-OP parallelism and a yellow circle for inter-OP parallelism and the blue circle for whether the technique can be applied for general graphs automatically. So first, people design specialized strategies for a specific model. Megatron LM is a good example. It designs a specific strategy for parallelizing the transformer neural network. Later, they improved it by adding interoperator parallelism for better scalability. There are also a lot of other systems trying to address the problem. However, they either cannot support both types of parallelism or cannot automatically apply to a general graph. In contrast, LPI is the first system that can solve both types of parallelism automatically. Okay, next I will give an overview of the LPI system. 
In the Alpha project, our goal is to build a unified compiler that can automatically find and execute the best strategy with both inter- and intra-operability for large deep learning models. Alpha has a very simple user API. Alpha provides a Python decorator at alpha.parallize. You can put this decorator on top of your, or on top of your Python deep learning functions. Um, when the function is being called for the first time, it triggers compilation. Then the function will be parallelized and run distributedly on your cluster. Under the hood, this simple API is made possible by several innovations of the Alpha project. To deal with the complicated search space of so many parallelization techniques, we organize the parallelism techniques as a two-level hierarchical space. We then design optimization algorithms to derive parallelization plans at each level. Finally, we implement an efficient compiler to generate the plan and a high performance runtime to execute the plan. Given an input computational graph, the whole parallelization strategy search space of this graph is a complex search space involves all kinds of inter and intra operator parallelism strategies. Previous, previous work failed to find a single unified algorithm to derive a good parallel strategy from the whole space. In Alpha, the key to make this problem solvable is the decoupling and the reorganization of the search space. More specifically, we first search for the inter-operator parallelism at the higher level. Then at the next level, we derive the best intra op parallelism strategy for each stage. We designed the Alpha compiler based on the search space decomposition. The input of the compiler is a computational graph and a cluster specification. We designed three compiler passes to do the optimization. Um, the first inter-operator path finds the best inter-operator parallelism strategy with dynamic programming. Later, the intra-op path finds the best intra-operator parallelism strategy with integer linear programming. The optimization is also hierarchical, which means the higher level pass will call the lower level pass multiple times and make decisions based on the feedback from the lower level pass. Finally, the runtime orchestration pass will realize the parallelization plan and execute and executes the strategy. Let's work through an example and show that uh, how each pass uh, works. For the inter-OP pass, uh, with this given computational graph. We first, uh, we need to partition the graph into multiple stages to form a pipeline. Um, and there are multiple ways to partition the graph uh, because each stage can have a different number of uh, layers or different operators, but we need to select the best one of them. Uh, then even if we pick how to partition the graph, we still need to assign each pipeline stage some devices to execute the stage. So here, for example, we assign eight GPUs for stage one and two GPUs for stage two. In Alpha, we abstract all the devices as a 2D device mesh. We assume the devices along each dimension has the same communication property. So for example, for a typical GPU cluster, we can set one dimension uh, to be all the nodes and, uh, and the, all the communication across along this dimension will go through the slower cross node ethernet. And then we can set another dimension to be all the GPUs within a node. And here the communication will go through faster connections like NVLink. Then we can design, uh, we, then we can assign devices to each stage by picking the best sub, sub mesh choices within this device cluster. In Alpha, we find that the problem of how to partition the computational graph and how to assign uh, the devices can be nicely formulated as a dynamic programming problem, uh, which can minimize the total pipeline execution latency. More details about the algorithm can be found in our uh, paper. Let's, then let's focus on the lower level intra-OP path. For a single stage and a sub-mesh of devices from the higher level inter-OP path, the goal here is to parallelize the stage on the devices in the sub-mesh with the best intra-operator parallelism strategy. In Alpha, we find this problem can be formulated as an integer linear programming problem. 
Specifically, the choices of different parallelization strategy for each operator in the computational graph can be uh, formulated as a decision vector in the integer linear programming. Then the op optimal strategy can minimize the uh, ILP objective, which is the sum of the computation cost of each operator and the communication cost within and between different operators. Again, more details can be found in our OSDR paper. Naively applying previous passes will take a very long time for compilation. In Alpha, we also include several optimizations to reduce the compilation time. We apply communication aware operator clustering in uh, ILP and DP to reduce the number of operators. So we can simplify the graph and we also perform uh, early stopping in the DP when it cannot produce, produce better results. And finally, we distribute um, the compilation of different parts on the cluster so we can further reduce the compilation time. As a result, we can reduce the compilation time to less than 30 minutes for our largest experiments. With the inter and intra OP passes, we can transform the original single device computational graph to these parallelized pipeline stages. While no existing framework supports executing uh, such a complex parallel plan, we also design a runtime by ourselves to efficiently execute the parallel plan. Specifically, we compile each stage to an executable with static instructions. These executable are then sent to the corresponding submeshes. Then the LPAR runtime orchestrates the intra-OP parallelism within a submesh and inter-operator parallelism across multiple device meshes. We also implement, implemented various optimizations for cross-mesh communication in the runtime with more details in the paper. Now let's move on to the evaluation uh, of ELPA. We compare ELPA with previous works on three widely used models. For GPT, uh, the standard transformer model, we test for models up to 39 billion parameters. A transformer is an extensively studied model and we can match the performance of the best existing manually designed framework, Megatron LM. Actually, we find almost identical parallelization strategies as the best manual system. And for g shard MOE is a transformer with some additional mixture of expert layers. We test for models up to 70 billion parameters. We show that we can outperform the best manual baseline on GPU by up to eight times on this AWS cluster with um, 64 GPUs. And for wide rest net, which is a significantly different model compared to transformer, and there is no existing manual model parallel strategy for it, we show that we can also generalize to this unseen models without manual plan, while other baselines fail to scale. We also use the LPA to perform inter-operator or intra-operator only as a baseline and perform this ablation study. We show that combining inter- and intra-operator parallelism is necessary and can help the system to scale to more devices. The above is a brief introduction about the technologies behind ELPA. More details can be found in our paper. Now let's move on to talk about some real-world use cases of ELPA. Since its release, ELPA has attracted a lot of attention from the open source community and several companies. On the training side, ELPA is deployed at Google Brain for training their next generation large language models. And on the fine tuning side, we collaborate with NVIDIA on fine tuning the OPT model with 175 billion of parameters at its supercomputer. We will give a GTT talk, GTC talk soon. And on the serving side, we launched a free OPT 175 prompting service several months ago. It has successfully served more than 171. 150,000 requests for more than 40,000 users. In summary, we present ELPA, a system for automatic model parallel training with both inter- and intra-operator parallelism. ELPA matches or outperforms specialized systems and generalize to new models. You can try ELPA now and start us on GitHub by visiting elpa.ai. I'm happy to answer your questions. 
All right. Thank you so much for that fantastic presentation, Liam. And if anyone has questions, please leave them in the chat. Otherwise, I'll just uh, ask a few myself. I think this is a really cool technology, uh, given the, the hype in large language models and wanting to train them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, how could TVM and acceleration of inference fit into this picture? Um, like, do, do you think it makes sense for people to train models with Alpha and then deploy on TVM? What might the connection piece there be? Is it any different than connecting with PyTorch, for example? Okay, yeah, great question. I do think TVM can uh, help a lot on the inference side. So currently, I think uh, TVM doesn't have a like, prioritization runtime, but it's easy to be added in TVM. Like we just need to add some communication primitives into TVM. And then like when we insert this, TVM should be able to accelerate the inference of model parallel large model as well. And the one specific thing about TVM is we have this tensor expressions. So like we can even do more advanced auto prioritization on top of this tensor expression. So if we do this, like some, maybe we can even get better like auto prioritization ability out than alpha. Yeah. So we can analyze on a lower level or a more primitive level. Yeah, I think that's a really cool direction. And I, I'd love to also kind of hear your thoughts on outside of TVM, what does the ecosystem look like for distributed inference? Are, are, like, who is the best solution today, if there is one? Okay, for distributed inference, uh, I guess faster transformer maybe is the industry standard. So basically, it's also a library from NVIDIA, and they manually optimize for BERT and the GPT, these transformer uh, architectures. And they do, like, they apply aggressive operator fusion, memory management. And then they also handle the communication very well, support various prioritization methods. Yeah, I guess that's the industry standard. And yes. TVM should be like try to match up with uh, this framework. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a great direction. You know, I, I guess kind of on, on the tail of large language models, do you, do you think Alpha is like well positioned to serve, you know, models like GPT-4 as they become open source? or variants of it. Yeah. Uh, like what is the upper size of models that you think uh, can be dealt with here? Or, or, or is, do, you, or do you think it's yeah, a good so, so currently we serve like a GPT-3 scale model. It's 175 billion parameter. We use, I think around 24 GPUs to serve that model. Um, and it works well, although like it's not heavily optimized because Alpha is originally designed for training. And uh, like when, so, so far, we don't know the specific architecture and the number of parameters for GPT-4. Um, once, if someone really some uh, good model, I think we, we can definitely deploy it on Alpha and the auto parallelization ability of Alpha will help the uh, deployment. Very cool. That'll, that'll be really neat. I think it'll be an exciting year and uh, it'll be great to see how Alpha integrates. We have a, a question from Christian Condi. Uh, who asks, are there any theories for why manual tunings ever outperform something like alpha? Oh, yeah, yeah. So for some of those, manual tuning can definitely outperform alpha. Because, for example, um, or although we considered like a comprehensive search space, but I do think there are some like other prioritization uh, techniques are not in the space of alpha. So in this case, um, like for example, if you, I saw some, uh, I saw some other papers, they, uh, do some innovative ways of parallelization. So in this case, I guess sometimes their technique can outperform Alpha. Yeah. This mainly comes from um, like some, uh, uh, lack of support of some parallelization algorithm in the search space. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Okay, uh, if there aren't any other questions, let's go ahead and thank Lian Min for the fantastic talk. Uh, I certainly will be looking at the Alpha GitHub and giving it a spin. <laughs> uh, yeah. So great work, thanks for sharing.